I've been spending time starting a new practice of tutoring a wonderful Dutch actor in standard American dialects. A standard dialect in the United States is basically represented as Midwestern. While I was at Boston University, part of my undergraduate training was studying dialects under the exceptional supervision of my speech teacher, Desette McKelvey. Recognizing that I had a pretty good ear, I eventually assisted her in drilling students in various dialects by implementing my own technique of listen and repeat. Maurice, the talented young man I refer to, is a highly disciplined graduate of a prestigious European arts institute. He's been invited into some wonderful auditions recently, and he's intently dedicated these last several weeks to getting our foreign phrasing and pronunciation under his belt. And for me, his progress has been rewarding to witness. He realizes that once muscle memory is in place, freedom is soon to follow. And with that, risk-taking and play will lead you in a merry dance of discovery. But, on the other hand, there are those talented few who fly with what they've learned phonetically and confidently open a door allowing spirit to play a significant part in our comprehension. We understand that they understand what they're trying to bring across and somehow communication is established, an often heightened form of communication. I go to bed. I beg your pardon. I go to bed and pull the covers up around my head. Case in point, Jean-Pierre Aumont. I know little of his background. My first familiarity with his work came with my purchasing the original Broadway cast recording of Dovarich, a musical that won Vivian Lee her Best Actress Tony Award. In my cocoon I bought the LP for love of Vivian, but I walked away after my first listening, utterly charmed by Jean-Pierre. Everything he sang on the LP seemed like it was filtered through a smile. I couldn't imagine a more charismatic and engaging leading man for Ms. Lee to have played opposite. Recently, I watched a film called Assignment in Brittany. I believe I'm correct in thinking that this was Jean-Pierre's first English-speaking picture after his having been offered a contract at MGM. Apparently, the film is attempting to mirror his own experiences as a free French resistance fighter at the onset of the occupation there. The film isn't very good, though. There's something of the swashbuckler in the studio's odd choice to propagandize the film. Self-conscious and predictable in its style, it attempts to do what Warner Brothers so often succeeded in doing during this same period. Unfortunately, the MGM sentiment overwhelms this particular enterprise, turning it into patriotic dribble. But Mr. Oman is fascinating to watch. He may be a bit difficult to understand, but his actions are completely comprehensible based on both his physical verve, his dedication, and most significantly, his spirit. He made only one other film for MGM, The Cross of Lorraine, before rejoining the Free France movement and utilizing his soulfully fired talents to serve the greatest good. Fortunately for us, in 1946, once his duty was completed, he returned to films all wide-eyed and charming. But there's always, at least as met by my eye, an underlying sense of having been witness to the extremes of human experience. The sadness I sense in the shadow behind that wistful smile.